Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is War Bonds Battle for Victoria by Punctus Studios. It plays two to five players, takes roughly about an hour and a half to two hours to play, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game War Bonds, you are playing a tactical area control game all about controlling your war leader and utilizing your squads in order to defeat your opponent's war base. You are going to play base number of players, a certain setup on this map here, utilizing your character to move and perform actions or strong actions to defeat your opponent's war boss and or camp. You're going to be using this initiative table to be moving down and taking each unit's turn in initiative order, activating your war camps and progressing down this rules and events track to then, then move this dragon here and end the game when it reaches this point here. Characters will win the game when they get their war camp to three or defeat all of the opponents, as well as uh, you can lose the game whenever your base has been and destroyed. Will you become the winner for Victoria or will you be left in the rubble? Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course my review. To set up the game War Bonds, you're going to first decide how many players you are playing. Each player is going to receive a war boss or a war leader. They are going to have a different un unique alignment to them, whether they be good or evil. And then you're going to set the board based on what the rules say. For a two player game, it will be different than a three player game. There's also a way to customize the boards. The one you see here is for a three player game and this is mid game. You're also going to set an initiative table up. This is going to have initiative marker. It's going to have three, uh, three for a three player game war bases, as well as of course your main units, your war leaders will be placed on the initiative track based on their initiative. Place the dragon on the bottom left hand side and then take out the dueling table and place it within reach of all players. Additionally, every player can have a player guide. This will give them a distinct advantage to understanding their character as well as units that they can produce and what units they should produce at what time. Has a bunch of stuff as well, like types of unique damage that can be dealt, when you can do damage, how duels work, etc. The last thing, but not least, is going to be this little thing here, which would probably be different in your copy of the game. This is a Kickstarter, this is a um, Kickstarter game, so because of that, this is a prototype. Thusly, components will change and be different in the final release version. This is going to have each of your squads, their initiative markers, and their character markers, as well as extra dice that you'll be needing, and of course the different number of player tokens that you might have. There is leadership, uh, there is also loyalty, there's supply tokens, and war tokens. Additional spaces for placement on the board to change your movement around, wild spaces, and of course, you're going to have these spaces here, which are going to be used for units that fly. Hopefully I set these up right, I'm not sure. Set aside all the additional squads that you might need in the game, and then you're basically ready to go. Then you make sure that when you set the board up correctly, there's going to be these blank spaces here. These are basically spaces that allow you to move faster. You're going to have these wild spaces here. These will allow you to deploy units with your war boss. And finally, you're going to also have your war base, which is going to be represented um, with these little tokens here. This is where you can summon units from as well throughout the game. But let's go ahead and talk about how to play. Playing the game War Bonds might look intimidating. However, it's rather quite simple. How it works is you take this initiative marker and you move throughout the initiative track. You will go from top to bottom, left to right. So you will initiate each character that you move upon and have them interact with one movement and one action. You will go down and you'll check domesticated Corvus, have them move, have them take an action. And you can see their actions on their cards here. More on that in my review. Then you'll move up, you'll go down, initiate another action. And you'll keep doing that for each character that is represented in the game board. Whenever you come across one of your war leaders, they can also summon units, but only whenever they are next to a wild space that has not been occupied. Um, and when you get to the last unit, you move up to this war camp area here. War camps will initiate your war bases, which will let you do different actions, and mainly you're going to be using the action to allow you to summon additional units. There's also a way for them to keep track of their levels and how many war tokens they might have, which you can then turn into levels, because when you hit level 3, you can win the game in that way. You'll move on after that to recalling any units that have maybe lost loyalty, and finally you'll move to the rules and events. This will allow you to move the dragon, perform the action represented on the dragon space, whether it be to bid or gain some type of loyalty or leadership, or whether it be to persuade one unit who's lost loyalty from an opposing character's faction over to your side, check to see if anyone wants to concede the game, exchange leadership for loyalty, end of round effects, 
flip and enable anything you need to, and then start a new round, and you'll move back here. And you will rinse and repeat that until the dragon reaches the end of game. As soon as that happens, that will trigger the end of the game, and you'll check to see who wins based on units on the board. This game is all about maneuverability, moving characters around, positioning and placing units. There's battling, there's going to be gathering new units, there's going to be units that are going to be, be destroyed or removed from the field, and you're just trying to kind of control this game in this non-luck based tactics game. There is a bunch of different setups for the game based on how you want to play, and um, there's also going to be unique location changes and how you want to proceed when putting your allies next to your war boss to gain benefits. Additionally, there's dueling. Dueling will take place when two war leaders fight each other, which will stop the game instantly and you'll go through this track here. Whether it be dual interruptions, where your allies can join, lose lose loyalty, but actually fight in the duel, so they kind of like do what they shouldn't do. They, they fight when the two leaders are going at it. War leaders will fight each other as well, and then you'll check to see if either warlord wants to end the duel. And if not, you'll just start a new round, up until someone chooses to end the duel, in which case you check whether or not an opponent interrupted the duel, and in which case somebody might lose the duel or the duel will end and there is no winner. And it'll rinse and repeat from there up until somebody dies or they give up. And so war leaders are not just battling each other once, but sometimes they can battle multiple times, uh, unlike other units who just simply move and attack. But that's basically the idea of how the game is played. Move through this, interact with each unit, and of course check to see their unique specifications on their, their cards here. We'll go into more about how attacking works, what type of abilities and whatnot people have and all that in my review because I think it's relevant to that. And we'll talk about also the gameplay. So let's, let's just get into it. I think you have an understanding. For a more detailed analysis, I'll have a link down below in the description where you can watch another video by a guy who thinks it's pretty funny and he'll explain the game in even further detail. Okay, so now you understand the basics of the game, I can get into the review of the game. And I first want to talk about the different squads and war bosses. So this here is a, a squad or a, yeah, maybe a group of units that you'll be utilizing. They're little anarchists and they have crusty, which means when you gather this unit, they're going to select the subtype along with the main type. And because there's multiple little uh, anarchists, you'll have to note which one is yours by taking one of your tokens that has your P3, your P2, player one, player two, player three, and put it on the bottom. So this is my character. You'll also put it on the initiative track here, which is a really unique way of explaining how and when characters are going to attack and move. Additionally, there's all these stats on the bottom. Now, this looks like a lot, but it's actually not too bad. It tells you their health, it tells you their presence, it's going to be telling you um, movement, it's going to be telling you how many attacks they get when they choose to attack, because this game is all about attacks per turn. It's not really about um, attacking once and doing as much damage as you can, but how many times you attack based on the amount of damage you deal. And then it's going to have weaknesses, resistances, and immunities. So this character is immune to fire, for instance. It'll also talk about their main action or their main attack. Hack. There's three other different actions they can take, like Saboteur, Diversion, and Sneaky. Some characters will also have Supply, which is detailed on the bottom right of the card, and you can use Supply tokens based on what the character tells you it can be used for. And War Bosses are the same as well for how that works. Like, for instance, here, uh, yeah, they're going to have more health, they're going to have um, better, stronger, more unique abilities that involve leadership as opposed to loyalty. And you'll gain loyalty in many ways throughout this game. Uh, when you've placed it here on this board here and here on this board here, this is where all the action takes place. This will allow you to start moving and taking actions with those units based on where their initiative marker is, and you'll be fighting with those units in a unique style of combat. Combat works like this. You move, you check your range based on your character, and then you fight. Your damage will go through based on the number of attacks you have and any bonuses provided. Small unit most likely won't be able to do as much damage to big units, but might get bonus attacks to small units. Or a unit that is flying might have an ability to drop a bomb on other units and might have a splash effect. In which case, when character's health goes to zero, that is where they pass away. And I've been using the dice to indicate how much health each of the characters have. Some squads are represented in health, as in how many units are in their squad, whereas the war boss is simply going to have a large number of health for that one unit. Duels are really cool too. You're not just going to go in and fight and one person wins uh, and the other person loses the game. Usually what happens is somebody will forfeit and try and escape, but will have to suffer a consequence unless the duel is not a very fair duel or their, their units kind of, kind of came in and fought each other, like all the different little allies started joining in. So you want to have just your two units battling each other out. 
but some war bosses are not as good at fighting other war bosses. So you have to be careful of who you choose to duel and when you choose to duel with them. There's spaces on the board. They're gonna give you benefit to movement. When you move onto a space and move um, onto these spaces here, it's free movement in order to get to spaces you need to get to. Just like deploying units that are wild on these little spaces here, trying to get to those at the beginning of the game is very important with your war boss because it gives you that extra advantage. There's an apprentice rule book, uh, which will seem uh, in daunting for the player or player guide, but it's actually quite easy. It gives you a sorted unit list. It tells you about all the different units in the game and how they work, as well as your recommended starting units that you're going to be gathering at the beginning of the game. So, okay, if I'm playing this guy here, I want bombers and I want archers and witches and so on and so forth. So you have a nice little like pamphlet of how you need to, to utilize your character for that first starting game. But after you do, you'll start making up your own combination of units because each unit works together. Uh, in certain different ways. Uh, additionally to the way that units kind of combined to work together with their presence, gaining loyalty, fighting against other units, scoring victory points. Victory is in loyalty as in leadership and as in the war tokens. It's a, a unique twist uh, to a game that I haven't seen in quite a while that involves a kind of tactical area control game. So uh, this game is quite daunting when you look at it. And yes, there is a lot of moving bits. And if you were to look at this as a whole, it would be quite, kind of overwhelming. But this initiative table does a great job of explaining what happens in what order with what units based on the initiative track and just going one and then two and only worrying about each of those units individually while other people can look at the whole as it happens makes the game a lot less daunting for newer players while the more advanced strategic players can kind of see everything and determine how they want to do things as the game progresses. The addition of unique events taking place at the beginning at the end of every round before the start of a new round is nice and it gives you kind of an additional currency if you're kind of behind. It gives you the ability to go a little bit more political or social rather than just straight up attacking, securing influence by gathering points for your war base to improve itself, utilizing the ability to push loyalty onto your units and people can use loyalty and leadership and supplies as ways of means for different attacks. There's a ton of different attacks and it's indicated on here how many attacks. It goes, okay, this guy does one damage and he'll deal three time, three number of three, three attacks whenever he attacks. So he'll go one, one, one. But some units are gonna be resistant to that. It might take less damage or immune to that and take none of that damage. And so you have to be wise and wary about when you choose. The quality of the game is nice. This is a Kickstarter game, so it's going to be a prototype here. So don't expect to see these type of components when you check out the page. They'll probably be a lot better. As well as, of course, the artwork is really, really great in this game. I love the artwork for the character cards. They're wonderful. The only thing that I wish is that the art wasn't as wasted on the cards because they're so hard to see. I wish you would see them on the back of these cards here. Note the character. I think it's really beautiful. I think it really works well. Another thing too is this artwork here on the main game board, while it is beautiful and I do like the art, is kind of different than the stylization of artwork that are on the cards here. And I wish this kind of represented that. But I know that you don't want to have too deep or dark colors to where you can't see what you need to see. And this does a good job of letting you know what's on the board and where it's located. But like I said, I just wish it kind of felt like it was together in that way. Additionally to remembering certain things, remembering when you have to use your presence and when you gain loyalty and when you don't gain loyalty, there is a lot presented in this player handbook here and you might miss something. In fact, as you play this game the first few times, you probably will miss something. It's just going to be something that happens throughout these type of games. It's a fun experience. It's a longer game, it's an in-depth game and there's a lot going on, but I think it does a good job of summarizing it down and letting players play one step at a time to make it simple. Overall, we like this game. This is a fun tactics game. One player was not as fond of it just because it was a little more complex than he was used to, but the rest of us really enjoy our experience with this one here. It's a lot of fun. All the units are so unique and interesting, and it just works so well together. If you want a strong tactics game that relies more on the complexity of choice and less about like the luck factor and when you can choose and how you choose to perform your battles and what you choose to do as far as working together in certain ways for diplomacy, but also it's all about attacking in the end, then this is one I'd strongly suggest you take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game War Bonds Battle for Vittoria. If you're interested in picking this game up, there's a link down below in the description. We have live streams. Whatnot is going to be at 
Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, and then our Sunday night stream is for YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitch, where we play games just like this one on stream, where you can watch and see how they're done. You can also go ahead and join our website, unfiltergame.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button, to see more videos like this. We try and produce them at least once a day, Monday through Friday, and then we have a stream on Wednesday, and we have a stream on Sunday. So lots of content is always coming out, as well as win reviews on Instagram, etc etc. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I will look forward to battling it out in Victoria, Vic Victoria with you next time. <laughs> Victoria. No, Victoria. <sighs> Words, my voice. It's going out. It's been a long week. <laughs>